Hey friends, you guessed it, Mrs. McBride, still coming to you straight from my kitchen table. All right, what we're doing for the rest of class today is we're going to finish up this lab called Calculating the Coefficient of Kinetic Friction. So in class, before Thanksgiving, um, you did the work on this particular lab, okay? Before we get too far, also what you're going to need is a calculator and your blue sheet, okay? So you took data on this page here, you should have class data from here, and you should have answered these four questions. If you don't have any of those things done right now, please go ahead and stop the video and finish that up. What we're doing is we're taking a look at this last page here. So I'm going to walk through you with you problem number two, and I'll give you hints on number one, three, and four, but you are going to finish that up. If you are in class today, you are going to hand that to the sub before you leave. If you are at home today, you are going to give that to me tomorrow when I see you. Okay, here we go. So as a reminder, we have been working on the problem solving steps. First draw a free body diagram. Ask yourself, is there acceleration? We're gonna write out the sum of the forces in the X and Y direction. Everywhere we see FF, we're going to plug in mu FN. Everywhere we see FG, we're going to plug in MG. Then we're going to substitute some numbers and we're going to solve. Okay, so we're actually going to solve. This is very exciting. Here we go. So the first step is to draw a free body diagram. So as I said, I want to do problem number two first. Okay, so this one says find the acceleration. So first thing we're going to do is draw a free body diagram. We've taken and we've shrunken our box into a tiny little dot. What forces are acting in which direction? Well, there's a pulling force pulling to the right. What other forces are acting? We've got our normal force pointing up. We've got the force of gra- oh, that was not the force of gravity. I was just seeing if you were paying attention. We've got the force of friction pointing to the left. And we've got the force of gravity pointing down. Okay, step number one, done. We're asking ourselves, is there acceleration? Well, you're asked to find the acceleration. So I certainly hope there's acceleration. What direction do you think it would be accelerating? I'm with you. I think it's moving to the right. Okay. And again, remember, this is like, you know, that third wheel. It doesn't really go on the free body diagram. It just goes near it. All right, so step three says we're gonna write out the sum of the forces in the X direction equals MA and the sum of the forces in the Y direction equals MA. Okay, so there's only acceleration in the X direction, so no acceleration in the Y direction. If there's no acceleration in the Y direction, what can we say about the forces? You're right, they're equal or balanced. So I'm gonna write out that FN equals FG. FN is gonna equal FG for all of these problems today because they're all on a flat horizontal surface. So we can go ahead and write that out for each one. Now in the X direction, we have two forces acting, the pulling force and the force of friction, okay? This is accelerating in this direction. These are acting in opposite directions, so we must have to subtract. We're gonna say F minus FF equals MA. And again, the reason why it's not FF minus F is because friction always acts opposite the direction of motion, so it's always gonna be negative. All right, Our, we're on to step four. Step four says everywhere you see FF, plug in mu FN. Everywhere you see FG, plug in MG. F minus mu FN equals MA and FN equals MG. Got it. Now it says substitute numbers and solve. So as a reminder, we're looking for the acceleration. So let's substitute the numbers that we have. Okay. Well, hold on. I see FN over here. I'm going to start over here. Well, if FN equals MG and the mass is 20 and G is 10, Let's do this difficult math and say that Fn is 100. This will help us because we're going to need to plug this in over here, okay? So the pulling force is 120. Mu is 0.4. The 
the normal force is 200, the mass is 20, and we're looking for A. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna do 120 minus 0.4 times 200. All right, so on this side I get 40 equals 20A, or I get two meters per second squared is equal to my acceleration. Now, this is tough, guys. This, I think, is really tough. So if you're struggling, this makes, this makes sense. If you're not struggling, you're a rock star, okay? Now, what I want you to do is finish up these problems. Let's talk about a couple of them. Number one, same question, find the acceleration. But do you see how there's no pulling force, right? So what you basically have is this equation and this equation but with no pulling force, right? So we really just have negative FF equals MA. You're gonna do all the steps here. I'm just gonna give you some hints here. And FN equals FG. Now these two here should be no problem, except for the fact that you need to use your reference tables to find the coefficient of kinetic friction for wood on wood. Lucky for you, I happen to have the reference table here. We're looking for wood on wood, and you're looking for the coefficient of kinetic friction, or 0.3. Okay, and for those of you who like to check your work, here are your answers. So for one, you should get an acceleration of negative two meters per second squared. For three, you should get six meters per second squared. And for four, you should get 0.133. Good luck. If you're in class and you need help, ask a partner. If you're at home and you need help, ask me tomorrow. Good luck, friends.